Imagine yourself getting stuck inside a time loop, where you get killed every day over and over again, in the same way, every time. Today's story is about a man named Roy Pulver, who is a retired Delta Force operator, and he dies every day in the same manner while being hunted by a group of freaks. To know the full story, tag along with us for the rest of the video. Roy Pulver is a former black ops guy in his 50s who lives in Atlanta after completing his missions overseas. He wakes up one morning to the sound of a scream by his date from last night and sees a machete-wielding man trying to cut him into pieces. He fights that man and disarms him with ease, and it seems like it's the 150th time the same incident is happening to him. After Roy finishes him, a helicopter armed with a heavy machine gun arrives outside his apartment and starts raining bullets at the apartment. Roy throws a knife at the machine gunner and kills him, but the machine gun keeps firing automatically. While bullets were raining at his apartment he sits beside his couch and contemplates the past. Roy was married to an English woman named Gemma before they separated, and he was happy with her. Soon Roy jumps from his fourth floor apartment down the street before his apartment explodes due to the crash of the helicopter in his apartment. Just falling before the street, he narrowly escapes an 18-tired large truck by falling on it. Roy explains that he already fell on the road 22 times consecutively and was run through by the truck every time. That's why he knows he can survive being run through by the truck by jumping over it. He then hijacks a sports car from the street and drives away from the area. As soon as he starts driving, he gets pursued by a couple of women, an assassin and her chauffeur. The woman shoots at him to kill him, and Roy explains that they have been trying to kill him numerous times. Roy then crushes into a bus and dies. This happens every day over and over again. Roy doesn't even know why they all want to kill him, or what he has done to them to deserve such action. Sometimes he manages to kill them back too. But it doesn't matter, because in the end, an Asian woman named Guan Yin chops his head off. So, in one of the loops, Roy calls his former wife Gemma for help to understand the situation he is going through but he gets surprised when it is answered by retired Colonel Clive Venter who is Gemma's boss. When Roy asks about Gemma, Colonel Venter replies that Gemma is dead, as she broke her neck last night by falling from stairs in the lab, Roy drops the call as he didn't believe that it was an accident, and suddenly two German twin assassins, blow him off with a big gun. In every loop, the same things happen to Roy with slight variations, and every time he dies at the end, Roy never could reach Gemma or find out how she died. Roy then goes to a Chinese diner run by his friend Chef Jame and orders two large bottles of Chinese liquor. A man named Dave who is a counter-surveillance expert eats beside him and bashes him for drinking so heavily and gives him a speech about it. Roy knows every little detail that is going to happen at 11.05 am, a famous Chinese sword fighter who is 12 times world champion named Dai Feng enters the diner and so on. But no matter matter which direction Roy runs to get away from his assassins or how hard he fights them back he never stays alive past 12.47 pm, they always find him within that time and kill him. So Roy gets furious as he dies every time, and on top of that his loved one is already dead. In Roy's mind, it's payback time. Then we can see in the story that before this time loop started Roy met his former wife which was only yesterday, but for Roy, it was months ago. Roy was invited by Gemma, who works as a scientist for a private company. When Roy arrives at the lab she starts taking his measurements, and Roy gives her his resume and inquiries about the job. But both of them are unaware of the fact that they were being watched by a secret surveillance camera by Colonel Clive Venter and his head of security Brett. Gemma shows Roy a device that can make time travel possible and can break the barrier of space. She tells Roy the capabilities of this device which Roy barely understands. Brett interrupts their conversation by informing Gemma that Colonel Clive or ordered her to be at his office immediately and reminds her that her lab is a restricted area and therefore off-limits to visitors. After Brett leaves Gemma tells Roy that she lied about the job interview. The lab is not hiring anyone now, rather she needs Roy to help her badly, Roy instantly replies when will he start. They also had a brief argument about their son Joe who is unaware of the fact that Roy is his father but knows him as his mom's friend and adores and idolizes him anyway. Roy wants Gemma to tell Joe who his father is but Gemma wants to hide the truth from their son. As they parted their separate ways and moved on a long time ago, Gemma starts acting weirdly and frantically starts cutting Roy's hair and he starts bleeding because of the scissor cut. She starts panicking and corners him and starts scolding him. 
When Roy manages to calm her down a bit she tells him that she wants him to be just like the man with whom she fell in love before. The man who gave her a son. Then she whispers the word Osiris in his ears and requests him to check the birthday present she sent him a few days ago before leaving. Roy is escorted out by the security and Gemma is taken in front of the colonel by Brett. The colonel calmly starts subtly interrogating her and though Gemma at first starts lying she soon gets caught and confronted. When he's done with her, he warns her that there would no more be any visitors in the lab and that will be should be informed about every development in the lab. Then the colonel tells Gemma she may take her to leave. When Gemma leaves the office it looks like she is shaken from the incident. Meanwhile, Roy is in a bar enjoying himself with his date Alice who is a dental hygienist and the bartender. When Alice is away for the washroom purpose, the bartender tells Roy that he and Alice will never be in love. Roy asks him why. She tells him that's because he's still in love with someone else and it's visible in his eyes. Suddenly Roy gets a phone call from Gemma at 3 a.m. and she sounds panicked she urges him to help her begging him to do what he always does the best. She couldn't finish her message though as Colonel Clive is listening to her conversations when her cell phone is tapped and jams her signals by turning on an electronic jammer. Colonel Clive orders his henchmen to find her immediately and set people after Roy to track and monitor his movements. And if he becomes a problem for them, then ruthlessly eliminate him quickly. As Roy didn't understand the message of Gemma clearly, he ignored the call and takes Alice to his apartment for that night, but after that night he gets forced to live the life in time loop over and over again. In the next loop he opens the gift package Gemma sent him as a birthday present, and finds out that it is a book and a message that says, Happy Birthday Roy, may you live your life to the fullest and forward, but remember time waits for no men. Roy runs away with the car he steals in every loop and visits an underground gaming compound in Atlanta so he can get some extra time and read the book to understand what the message Gemma wanted to give him before she died. There he sees Joe, now, as Gemma is already dead, Roy is his only family and so he thinks about telling Joe the hard truth. That, his mother is dead, and Roy is his father. So Roy takes Joe out for lunch but as soon as they are outside of the underground he sees that it's 12.50 p.m., it's three minutes past the maximum time he survived until now. So he understands that the assassins are actually tracking him. And soon all the assassins surround Roy and shoot at him Roy saves his son from the incoming bullets by taking the hit and before he dies he tells Joe that he is Joe's father. As soon as Roy wakes up in the next loop he starts searching for the tracking device in the diner and soon takes Dave's help to identify the tracking device. It is found that the tracking device is implanted inside one of his tooth by Alice who was paid by Brett to do it. This was the 145th time he died at the hand of his assassins and now he knows that they were tracking him by that device inside his tooth. Soon Roy lures all the assassins one by one by using the same tracking device and kills them all. Roy assumes that Gemma is dead and she puts him in the time loop for a purpose, he just has to figure out what purpose that is. He takes revenge on all the assassins by ruthlessly killing them all and blowing them away with a bomb. He gets a phone call from Brett in one of the assassins' phones and mocks Brett as a lapdog, to this Brett challenges Roy for a combat. Roy accepts the challenge and threatens Brett. Roy tries to enter the compound of Dino Lab a couple of times, but every time he gets killed as Lab is heavily guarded. So he improvises and kills one of his assassins who looks similar to him, and enters the compound faking his identity but soon he gets found out and killed. So Roy takes another attempt in next loop, this time he stealthily kills all the security guards on his way to the penthouse in the lab. But as he reaches the penthouse he meets Guan Yin and they fight many times in different loops but no matter how much firepower Roy spends on her, she always defeats him with her unbelievable skill with the sword. In one of the loops, he meets Colonel Clive for the first time and he congratulates him for his outstanding performance in combat. The colonel admires Roy and compliments him on his efforts and then he starts explaining to him that the colonel's lab developed an Osiris Spindle, named a time machine which Colonel Clive intends to use to rewrite history to make himself the most powerful man on the planet. Then he beheads Roy before Roy dies. Roy realizes that Gemma put him inside the time loop using the Osiris Spindle device and the Colonel is responsible for her death. So he vows to mess him up the next time. And also the Colonel has no idea that the Spindle is working. Roy gets thrilled knowing that Gemma had faith in him. That she thought he was the only one who could stop the Colonel. So Roy approaches Dai Fong in the diner in the next time loop and asks her to teach him sword fighting. Roy spends the next few months learning sword fighting in every loop and becomes a master at sword fighting in couple of months. The next time Roy meets Guan Yin he taunts and mocks and plays with her, 
and the whole time they fight with swords. After proving to Guan Yin that he was the better sword fighter he kills her with her sword. Then Roy kills Brett with the sword too, but Roy spares the colonel as he wants to kill the monster with his bare hands. So they start an unarmed fight but the colonel though an old man with white hair and a beard proves to be a master at hand-to-hand -hand combat. When colonel tries to reach for a gun Roy stabs him with the sword. The colonel understands that Roy could beat all his adversaries only because the spindle is activated. And try tries to reason with Roy saying that he can rewrite all of mankind's history without all the tragedies like World War I and World War II's. But Roy argues that the past is the past and it's not worth discussing it. Only the future matters, one should learn from past mistakes and move on to better things. The colonel mocks Roy saying if he is here in the lab killing him who is going to protect Joe as the colonel already dispatched a unit to kill him. Roy rushes to the spot and finds out that Joe is dead, out of depression Roy stops fighting anymore. And in every loop, his assassin just kills him in his bed. But soon he shrugs his depression off and decides that he'll spend the rest of the time he has with his son getting to know him more. They play video games all day and walk in the park. Roy spends quality time with his son in every loop and every time the loop ends with the world being destroyed. In one of the loops, Joe tells him that he talked with his mom that day in the morning. Roy gets surprised as he thought she was dead a long time before that but now she knows she was alive even after the loop started. So he promises his son that he is going to come back to save Joe and his mom. Roy figures out that Gemma was alive 14 minutes from the moment he wakes up. So he jumps into the helicopter outside his apartment and kicks out the gunner. Then she commands the pilot to take him to Dino Lab immediately. After reaching the lab, Roy kills all his assassins with a heavy machine gun. Then he defeats all the guards of the lab and reaches Gemma in time to save her. Roy kills the colonel and his henchmen instantly. Gemma gets surprised by the fact that Roy came to save her and he succeeded in defeating all the obstacles in his path. Roy tells Gemma a lot of things about Joe that he learned by spending time with him in all those time loops. It looks like Joe shared many secrets of his life with Roy, which he was afraid to share with his mom. Roy asks Gemma what can he do to stop the spindle. But Gemma sadly replies that she doesn't know, this whole work was hypothetical. And before Gemma saw Roy she didn't even know that it works. She tells him that if he walks into the spindle supposedly it should reset as his DNA is encoded in it. And everything should become normal again. But Gemma warns Roy that if he walks into the spindle, he might cease to exist in reality. Roy replies to this that to keep Joe and Gemma safe he is going to take that risk. They depart for the last time by kissing each other and Gemma tells Roy that she loves him. Roy tells Gemma to wait for him, and Gemma tells Roy she will wait for him. Roy walks into the spindle and soon his eye colors start changing. And Gemma gets shocked by seeing that Roy by miracle survives the spindle. That's how Roy dies 300 times and stops the spindle to save his son the woman he loves and the whole world from the spindle. Roy is the Osiris. If you love this video please give us a thumbs up and visit our channel for content like this and also don't forget to subscribe.